So you'll need to open up Moodle because we'll jump to different worksheets. Now what I was going to do is we'll just do like one question <coughs> for each worksheet. But if there's some worksheets that you think are much more difficult than others, we can focus on doing those ones first. So can you have a look at Moodle and look at the topics? Yeah. And uh, let's see which one to have a look at first then. That's a practical one. Let's say. <laughs> We can do one or two of those first then, if that's what you want then. Yeah. Okay, are we looking at practical problems first? Is it the practical ones from yesterday you want to see first? Yeah? Okay, so if you open up the ones from yesterday then, we'll do some of those first. Um, just pick out a question that you want to see then. I can, I can open it up here. Yeah. 
But if you try them yourself, you can you can see which ones. Okay. Right. Maths, indices, and log practical problems. Okay. I mean, we, if you think this is quite difficult, we can do some of these first. I don't know how many you want to see. Um, question one and question two and question three, they're all pretty similar to what we did yesterday. So maybe we'll have a look at um, number four. And I think number six, seven, is it? So four and seven, is it? So can you all just take one or two minutes just to have a look at number four and maybe even start it before I do it. So number four here. Uh, was it the interest rate? The, the compound part that was tricky, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look here. Okay, did you read number four? If you don't have it, you can see it on the screen here. Look, can you see this? Anne invests in a financial product that yields 12% APR. Now, I don't know if people know what APR is. Does anyone know APR? APR? Yeah, it's a per annum thing. It's annual percentage rate converted monthly. Now, if you don't know what that means, I tell you what it means in brackets. This means that the bank pays 1% interest per month. So every month, the bank pays 1%. So for example, if you start off with 100 euros, then after one month, they pay 1%. So how much will you have? 101. Yeah? And it keeps increasing every month. Do you remember the quick way to increase by 1%? What do you do? You multiply by 1.01. I don't tell you how much she has at the start, so I'll just call that B. And then she puts it in the bank, and each month you multiply it by 1.01. So then after two months, you multiply it by 1.01 again. After three months, you multiply again. So after N months, this is how much you have in the bank. Does that make sense? And we want to know how long until she doubles her money. So we want to know how long until she has twice as much as what she started. Okay, now does that... Does this make sense? Is this okay? So what am I trying to solve for? What do I want here? N. What can I cancel here? The B. So I cancel the Bs. So I'm left with 1.01N equals 2. And you have two ways to continue. One way, you can put log on both sides. So here this is N log 1.01 equals log 2. So N equals log 2 over log 1.01. But there's another way where you can get the answer directly. Yeah, because remember, what you want here is 1.01 to what power makes 2. So it's log base 1.01, 2. So I want you to check on your calculators that you get the same answer for both. Should be about 70 months. 69 points. If I round it to the nearest month, what would it be? 70. If she, wants, if she wants to double her money, if you round down to 69, she'll have less than double. And if you round up to 70, she'll have more than double. So if you want to at least double your money, it has to be 70 months. And this here should also be about 70. Yeah. Okay, so can you write this one down? And then after you write it down, have a look at, um, I think I'll do 6 and 7. 
six is a very good exam question. It's the type that you would get in the exam because they like to make a little story with it. And uh, seven is a, bit, a little bit difficult. So we'll do six and seven. When you write this down, please have a look at six. Do you have it on your phone? Yes, okay. <coughs> Now, uh, listen, listen, I think um, you said, or somebody said that another difficult question was the log question, the equation. So I think after that, I'll do those ones next then. Okay, you have this written down now? Yeah? Okay, let's have a look at six now. Okay, so six. Um, as an example, the radioactive decay of carbon-14 is exponential with half-life of 5,730 years. So, a quantity of carbon-14 will decay to half its original amount after 5,730 years, regardless of how big or small the original quantity was. After another 5,730 years, one quarter will remain. So what's happening here, um, I don't know if you've done this in biology or chemistry, uh, carbon-14. Carbon-14 is an isotope, a radioactive isotope. So what happens is you have carbon-14, let's say 100%, but then after 5,730 years, it's at 50%. And then after another 5,730 years, it's at 25%. And the relationship is exponential. So this means the amount of carbon you have, C14, will equal A, E, B, T. And we want to know what the A and the B is, and then we can answer the question. So, let's have a look. How much do we have at the beginning? What percentage at the beginning? 100%. 100%. So, what's the, uh, what's the A then? Well, A is 100%. So, that's good. So, we have the A. Now, after, is it 5,730? Yeah. After 5,730 years, A is 100 B is 5,700, that's T, B. And how much do we have after 5,730 years? 50%. Can we get the B from this? Yeah, yeah we can. So if I divide, I get 0 0.5 equals E5730B. What to do next? Log, log, cancel, cancel. So the B will equal log 0 0.5 over 5730. So the B equals, if you can type that in, it'll be minus 0 point, uh, it'll be quite small. Do you have a calculator? Can you check these? Do I have an item? It's quite small, is it? Yeah. Okay. Minus zero point zero 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 one two one. If I round it. So now we have this formula. The amount of carbon fourteen will equal one hundred percent E power minus zero point zero 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 one two one T. That's our formula. We got the A and we got the B. So now I can answer the final part. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found to have 79.5% of the carbon-14. Estimate the age. So we know that the amount is 79.5. And now we want to try and get the uh, T. I won't bother writing the percent in. 
Okay, so what do I do first? Divide by 100. I get 0 0.795 equals E minus 0 0.000121T. Next, log. Cancel, cancel. And then I should finally divide. Divide by this. Minus 0 0.000121. So this gives me the T. Um, log 0 0.795. What did you get? 1896 about. And I ask you to give me the answer to two significant figures. So to two significant figures, the answer would be 1900 years. Okay, so this is a good exam question because this is exactly the type that they like to give you in the exam. They like to make you find the A and B, and then after you find the A and B, they like to make you uh, find T. So finding A, B, and then T, that would be a very common uh, type of exam question. The other type that they like is find A and B, and then find the answer if they give you T, which is much easier, of course. So the other choice you have is A, B, and then they give you a T at the end. So this is a good exam style question, okay? If you can write this one down, then we'll look at the next one. And then after that, we'll have a look at the log equations. Number five? Yeah, number five is much easier than this one. Yeah? It's okay. Okay. Let's have a look at the uh, next one. Can I scroll down? Yeah, okay. So number, what are we on now? Seven, is it? Seven. Okay. So, teacher has a game with his students. So the way the game works, he's thinking of a word in the dictionary, and the student wins when they've guessed what word he's thinking of. If they guess wrongly, the teacher will say if the word they guess comes before or after his word. So, for example, if the teacher is thinking of cat, and the student says bat, the teacher will say, no, but my word comes after bat in the dictionary. So what's happening here is, uh, you, have, you imagine the dictionary starting from A to Z, uh, the first word, something like aardvark or something, uh, down to zebra, whatever. And the teacher's thinking of a, oh, first word would be A, I suppose. The teacher's thinking of um, a word. So let's imagine that the teacher is thinking of cat. So then the student asks, okay, is the word you're thinking of fat? And the teacher, of course, will say no, but the teacher will say, my word is before cat in the dictionary. Before, yeah, so the teacher is thinking of cat. Isn't that what I said in the question? Yeah, thinking of cat. And the student says, okay, is the word you're thinking of fat? And the teacher will say no. But... Uh, the word bat is before what I'm thinking of in the dictionary. So you know, okay, it's not anything here. So, for example, if, let's do something else. Let's say I ask the teacher, okay, is the word you're thinking of uh, dog? The teacher will say no. The word I'm thinking of is before dog in the dictionary. Yeah? What's that? Before the alphabet, Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Not, it's not important for the question, but yeah. Et cetera, et cetera, yeah, yeah. But you don't, need to, you don't even need to know that for the, the question. Um, so, imagine this. You don't know at the beginning of the game which word it is. So you have to guess a word. So should you guess a word that starts with the letter A, the letter Z, or some other word in the middle? Yeah, why? Like if you said, 
is the word you're thinking of apple? And the teacher said, no, it comes after apple. Yeah, so you've wasted your turn. So what's the best thing to do here? Which, which letter should you pick, the best one? Some, the letter in the middle, which is around about M, I think. But it, you don't even need to know that. All you need to know is the best word to pick is one that's in the middle. Because if you pick one in the middle, what have you done? You've reduced it by half. So maybe this is gone. And then on your next turn, what do you pick? Again, you pick a, le a word in the middle, and again you reduce it by a half. And again, you pick one in the middle, and you reduce it by a half. So what you want to do is you start off with 16,000 words, and then if you pick one in the middle, then it's 8,000 then, and you pick one in the middle again, 4,000, and so on. So you have 16,000 times a half power n, where n is how many guesses you've made. So after one guess, how many choices are left? 8,000. After two guesses, 4,000. So you want this to equal what at the end? 1. That's what you want left, isn't it? Because you only want to be left with one word and that has to be the right word. Now this is the worst case. Maybe you get the word right on the first go. What we're trying to do is work out the maximum number of guesses. Imagine that you said, is the word you're thinking of cat? And you said, yeah it is. Then you're finished after one turn. What we're doing here is we want to know the maximum, the worst case. We keep guessing until there's only one word left. This is the worst case. Yeah? So I want everybody to try and solve this. Find the N, okay? It should only take you a minute or two. Get the N here. Negative N. Oh no, something went wrong there. So we have 1 over 2 power N equals 1 over 16,000. So if we put a log on both sides, like this, yeah? Then we get N log 1 over 2 yeah, I'm going to calculate it here. Yeah, that sounds about right. So n equals log 1 over this over over this. And uh, what do you get here? 13? 9, 9, 7. So, of course, you can't have 0.97 as a guess. So what is the answer? Is it 13 or is it 14? Yeah, it's 14. So this is the maximum. It should not take you more than 14 guesses. And after 14 guesses, you're at the right answer. And if you think about it, this is, you know, that might be surprising. If you imagine that there's 16,000 words, you only have to make 14 guesses and you've come to the word you're thinking of. And the reason it's quite small is because if you do it right, each time you half it. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, so if you wanted to solve this, it should be then n equals log base a half 1 over 16,000 like this, yeah. And this, you just have to maybe need to put in brackets, it should equal the same thing then. Okay, write this one down and then go to the worksheet on logarithmic equations. Can you open that worksheet and tell me which ones you want to see on logarithmic equations, yeah?
Okay, did you write that down? So if we look at the log equation worksheet, um, it's probably the ones at the end, is it number six? Yeah. So which, which one do you want to see from number six then? I think I did, I did some of these, I don't remember which ones. So which ones do you want to see? Yeah, so I can do some more. Which ones do you want to see in a number six? Yeah, which letter? Tell me which letter. Something like E. Hmm? E. E. Y. Did I not do Y in class? Okay, so I'll do Y then, yeah? And if you want, I can do E as well, but I, I think Y is harder. Yeah. So, let's have a look at this one. Log base 4, 9x plus 1, minus log base 2, 6x plus 2, equals minus 1. Yeah? So what is the first problem here you will have to deal with? The base, yeah. So which base do we change? Do we change the 4 or the 2? Yeah, you, it doesn't matter, but usually it's a little easier to make the bigger base the smaller base. So, if I change this to base 2, the price I pay is I divide by log of the old base 4, minus log base 2, 6x plus 2 equals minus 1. Now, what is log 2 for? It's 2. So this will be log 2, 9x plus 1 over 2, minus log 2, 6x plus 2 equals minus 1. Or if you want, that's a half log 2, 9x plus 1, minus log 2, 6x plus 2 equals minus 1. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We cannot use the second rule of logs. Why not? Because the half. So what can we do with the half? Yeah, we can bring this up as a power. Yeah. So log 2, 9x plus 1 power a half minus log 2, 6x plus 2 equals minus 1. Yeah? Now I can use the second rule of logs that says this will be log base 2, 9x plus 1 power a half over 6x plus 2 equals minus 1. Now here, remember the definition of log. This says 2 to the power of minus 1 equals 9x plus 1 power a half. But what's power a half? Uh, square root over 6x plus 2. So this is 1 over 2 equals square root 9x plus 1 over 6x plus 2. I can cross multiply. Yeah, and then what to do next? Square both sides. So I get 36x squared plus 24x plus 4 equals 4 times 9x plus 1. Um, 36x squared plus 24x plus 4 equals 36x plus 4. 36x squared, what's that? Are you sure I didn't do this one? This seems very familiar. Um, 24x minus 36x. Yeah, I okay, it doesn't matter. It's nearly finished now. 24x minus 36x minus 12x equals 0. Divide by 12. Yeah, so 3x bracket x minus 1. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, 3x minus 1, isn't it? 
Yeah, so we got x equals zero or now what I didn't do, I should have done at the start, is check when is it defined. <coughs> so just for a moment, if I go back to the start here, here x must be bigger than minus 1 over 9, and here x must be bigger than minus 2 over 6, which is 1 over 3. Which means, if you put these together, it means x should be bigger than minus 1 over 9. Yeah. But if I look at both answers, it doesn't matter because both answers are positive, so they're definitely bigger than the 2. So both answers we can take. Yes? Okay, now I'll do another one of these and then we can look at a different lesson. Uh, what about like a question like uh, <coughs> I think it's C. 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 C is a lot like Z. A lot like Z. Yeah, but I don't have to present like log X times C. I just want like log uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but that's just like C. Let's see. Which one do you want to see? Which one? That's fine, yeah, yeah. After after this one we can look at what lesson? That was the final question in one. The GP one. Yeah, we can look at GP after. Oh, I know the one you mean. Yeah, we can do that one. Yeah. What about Q? Yeah, I think I'll do like Q. Yeah. Okay. Listen up, please. Listen. So, the next one I'll do, this one is Q. It's log base 7, 1 over X, plus log base X of 7 equals 7. So, this time, I'll write down what I need from the x. Here x should be not zero, of course not. And what else do we need for the x? It x needs to be positive for sure. And here likewise x should be positive. So in other words, we need the x to be a positive number. Okay? What is the problem here? The problem is the uh, bases are different, but also this here is a bit of a problem. So what I'll do is I'll change that into log 7 x power minus 1. And then I'll bring that down to make it log base 7 x plus log base x 7. Now which is easier to have the x or the 7 in the base? The 7. So I need to fix this one. I'll use the rule that lets me flip them around. So I get minus log base 7x plus 1 over log base 7x equals 7. Or, to make it a bit clearer, 1 over log base 7x minus log base 7x equals 7. So what to do next? I can't use the second rule. Yeah, a substitution. Or, yeah, or multiplying. So I'll let u equal log base 7x. So this will be 1 over u minus u equals 7. Next, I'll multiply by u. Yeah. So I'll get 1 minus u squared equals 7u. So I'll get u squared plus 7u minus 1 equals 0. Uh, I took it to the right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, this 
it doesn't have nice roots, does it? It doesn't. So it has a uh, third roots. It has roots, doesn't it? So uh, if you have the two answers, or do I? I'll type them down here. Yeah, let's get the two answers. So we have to use the quadratic formula, and when we use the quadratic formula, we get two answers. The first one is minus seven plus root fifty-three over two, and the second one is minus seven minus root fifty-three over two. But what was u? It was log seven x, wasn't it? Equals this. <coughs> And then the second one is log 7x equals this. Okay? So, to finish, we get here x, uh, no, sorry, we get 7 to what power? Minus this one here, yeah. Minus 7 plus that over 2 equals x. So that's the first answer. Is this answer positive? Yeah, so it's fine. And then the second answer will be 7 power minus 7 minus root 53 over 2 equals x. Is this one positive? Yeah. I think this one's positive. No? 7 power. Po this. Yeah, in total, it's positive. In total. True, the power might be positive, but in total, or negative, but in total it's positive. Then. Yeah. Okay, so these are our two answers for this one. Um, yeah? Um, GP, we're going to have a look at GP next. Um, I have a quick question if you have time. Yeah. But is it a really long, uh, long, um, uh, like really long, uh, long time ago? But I had it in my question. It's only one question. But yeah. Which lesson? It's all the fish too big. It's in the graph, and there's question C that doesn't make sense to me because um. Let's see. How first we get on with the GP. Yeah. And if you want, maybe I can do that one at the start of the tutorial, and then after that, we could then have a look at the coursework then in the tutorial. Oh. Then. So um, we're going to have a look at GP. And um, I'll write the question down. Can I scroll down? Yeah? yeah. Well, anyways, this is all recorded. So uh, we want to calculate the sum from 1 to 10 of a half e n plus a half e minus n, like this. This one's a little tricky not impossible. The first thing to do to make your life easier is you can split these into two problems. The first one which is this plus the second one. Okay. Next what could we do to simplify? Yeah? Any ideas? Yeah, factorise what? Take what out? The half. Yeah, you're allowed to take the half out. So you have a half sum n equals 1 to 10 e n plus n equals 1 to 10, a half as well here, e minus n. Now, let's look at each of these pieces separately. They're nearly the same. So what is the first term here? e power 1. And the second term? e power 2. And the next term? e power 3. So in fact, this is a GP, isn't it? Yeah. What is the first term in this GP? e. And what are you multiplying by each time? e. e. Because if you look at the side here, if I go e, e squared, e cubed, each time you're multiplying by e and you're starting with e. Now let's have a look at the second one, e minus n. What's the first term? e minus 1. The second term? 
e minus 2, e minus 3. Or 1 over e, 1 over e squared, 1 over e cubed. This is GP. The first term, 1 over e. And each time, what are you multiplying by? 1 over e. So again, this is a GP where A is 1 over e and R is 1 over e. So if you use your GP formulas, you get a half A 1 minus R power, what's the power? 10 over 1 minus e plus a half A 1 over e 1 minus 1 over e power 10 over 1 minus 1 over e. Now it's a lot, but you just type it in the calculator and you have the answer. Um, yeah. so There's 10 terms. So and it, uh, one of is not one, but 10. Well, it's going from 1 to 10, so it's like calculating S10. Okay. Do, do you have an answer here? If we type this in, please. Say again. Okay. I think that would be okay. One seven four two two. Yeah. Uh, and does that match with the? Does that match with the back? Yes. Yeah. Listen carefully. Listen, this example is a very useful example for your uh, coursework as well. Because towards the end of the coursework in task 3, you will have to do something similar to simplify your series. Okay, so again, I'll just say that one more time. In task 3 of your coursework, you'll have to do something very similar to this to finish it. So this is an important example for your coursework. Uh, in the tutorial later today, I'll do a couple more questions on the board if you want, and then we can spend time uh, on the coursework then. Okay? Uh, it's one class now, isn't it? And the tutorial is in? Tutorial on Yeah, is the tutorial in one hour, is it? Yeah. It's okay I don't know. Ask me when I'm not hungry. I'm hungry right now. I'm solid. I'm sorry. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said I am hungry. Not I'm a weirdo.